Okay, next stage. Now, I'm going to show you, I put a face on the box. And this is that mouth, still talking. And I will read the words that God gave me. Yes, we were very good at letting our forms take control. We squared away all of our parameters and flattened ourselves out. And we bowed down to systems and theories and doctrines and creeds. We believed in our view of things and another's view became something we labeled wrong, sinful, blasphemous, without of ourselves. And sometimes we would even burn, loot, and kill in order to keep our form perpetuated. When before we were like a butterfly, winging our way, going with the flow. We further boxed ourselves in, making a lot of boxes of first one and then another theory. We were looking for our wholeness, but in doing this, we extracted formulas and rituals and sacrifices and all manner of devices we put into place, which further boxed us in. When we realized that we were not free, that we were meeting our neighbor and trying to box them into a pattern as we ourselves were in, we became aware of the many, many boxes piling up everywhere. Talking became our favorite pastime, and we defended our box against another's boxed opinions. But we were all caught up in a box, our own selves. We could give you rules and regulations. We could give you rituals and formulas. The form became so binding that many of us began to balk. Many of us told others that we just could not be boxed in any longer. We wanted to go against the rules, the theories that taught us that the rules must be followed, that the do's and the don'ts were the truth that would set us free. And yet, we were not free. We would look at first one box and then another and compare and be astonished that others in their boxes were just as we found ourselves to be. So many of us started folding in, started to change the shape we were in, to streamline ourselves, so to speak, for it would not allow us freedom to stay in our boxes. We thought about the part of us known as the spirit. We allowed our spirit to soar as we folded our sides into the very heart. We started to feel lighter, and we imagined that we could actually fly. Now, this is what you do to fold the dove, or the crane, and that takes it into the kite stage. And I'm going to fold it like this, and like this, and I've already drawn a little face there. This is the kite's face, and you do that on the back too. And this is the part where I say it looks sort of like a kite. Wouldn't you agree? That's a kite. <laughs> anyway, as a kite, not all of us, but some of us, I guess you might call us New Agers, the kite ones, because they looked into everything. They just would go wherever the wind would blow them. And they looked into Eastern meditation and practices. They looked into Indian, ancient, Egyptian, you name it. They just were here, there, and everywhere looking into everything for an answer. And all of the things that they looked at had something good to give them. Even if it wasn't completely true, parts of it they could put together and, and, and it's, it was like, well, I'm new age. It's like, I don't believe all of what one group says, but I take the good from it that I can resonate with and the good from another group. And if I had to make a story of it all, it would come from all of them, parts and pieces of, of the complete story. But that's what this is about, that we all have a part to play. And everybody, if they'll play their part and do it as good as they can, we can fix this world. And the next step is going to show the folding down of the mountain. Now you see the mountain, it's right here, where the eyelids of this little kite are. You had to fold it down 
both ways, you make a crease so that the next fold will be what you want it to be here. I'm going to show you. I'm going to fold it both ways. And then I will read you from the next page in the book. We wanted to soar. We wanted to soar, but we needed to bring about a change in our thinking, our mental self, a change in our physical. We defined, yet again, a new kind of knowing, a new kind of physical exercise that would align our spirit to that of our mind and body. We talked of how we would soar, we would create a wonderful world by our ambition to take a further step in reaching for the truth. We pulled out all the restraints and became aware of our need to go on seeking our truth as we reformed and refashioned ourselves by still yet another set of rules and formulas and rituals and dogmas. We were sailing in our lofty space, so sure that we had risen above the others still on the ground, but in our ascension, we felt the tug of the string holding us to the earth, pulling us down so often, for they were our brothers. They were part of our own selves, and how could we rise without them? And yet, they were the mountain in our road to ascension. Without them, we could only fly so high but we were always subject to the winds of change. Our experience was that we had somehow fallen back into a pattern of fear. We did not love the ones who pulled our strings, trying to pull us down to earth. And on this page I'm in the book, I've got, there's the wind blowing the little kites around, and there on the ground in these hills are the kite, are the, um, squares, the ones still in their boxes, holding the strings to the kite, pulling us down, saying, oh, don't fly away now. We don't want to do that until we're in the sweet by and by. You know, some people think we're going to fly away in the sweet by and by. But there's a lot of us searching now for some of these answers that we want to find. And I think I've found some answers in this story. And I think that now I will tell you uh, a suggestion I might have that you could take me up on. Because when you're in this stage that we call the uh, butterfly stage, which I have to get it back here, let's see. Okay, here's the butterfly. I imagined a choreographer getting a bunch of, bunch of dancers to dress like butterflies. And some of the butterflies look different than others. And they have their little dialogues where some butterflies are saying to other butterflies, we're better than you because, and uh, are, we're different and we're more special because, and them talking about their differences. And people all over the world, they don't have the same differences with the ones that people maybe in America have differences with. They have differences over other silly little things like we do. Well, that sounds like I said the same thing, yeah. Well, like I said, making this and not having a script is going to be very hard. But what I imagined that we could make songs about with little butterflies singing them is why our differences make any difference? What's wrong with being different? And why do we have to have differences that divide us so much that we see one another as someone we ought to kill or put down or hurt or ruin the reputation of? Why can't we celebrate the differences? And I want, you know, people who are good songwriters or illustrators or choreographers or dancers to get interested in making some kind of program that would show little butterflies, people in butterfly outfits, <laughs> talking about their differences and resolving them. 
and uh, the butterfly is just the illustration for that stage of which we're going through actually right now because now in our world the differences people have are making for a lot of trouble because people be, are beginning to demonize one another and see a them and us when we're all really just this one piece of paper. <laughs> we're all one. And we are both the macrocosm and the microcosm. Now I'm getting off of the words so much of the story, but I just had to put that in. And in my next um, series of this, I will show you, let's see, what, what does it show next? Oh, the fifth step, bending down the mountain. I showed you that, the bending down of the mountain. Because you see, we see the other one is the mountain in our in our way, keeping us, our, our country, or our world from pleasing God. The other ones are the mountain, or so we say. But we're trying to destroy what is actually a part of our own self. So we've been down the mountain this way, and we've been down the mountain that way, but it doesn't go away, and it can't go away. And that's because it's part of who we are. And I know this for a fact. The mountains in my way are people I love. They're my own family, kids and parents and, and um, sisters and brother-in-laws and all kinds of people don't agree with me, but I'm not going to demonize them. I would, however, love it if people could just simply talk without getting all emotional and without getting all defensive so that we could actually hear what one another has to say. Now, right now in our world, we have all this problem where the Muslims and the Christians seem to be at odds with one another. But I don't think that has to be. And when 9-11 happened, my question never got answered, and I'll tell you what my question was. Why do they hate us so much that they would do this, the ones that did it? And the only answer I seemed to be getting back was because they're jealous and of us because we have more freedoms and we have more wealth. And I just don't buy it. I think we need to be able to talk about the differences that people have because if we can't talk about it and we gonna and we settle for some silly notion that oh this person was just jealous then we'll never look at the real cause because I think there are things we need to know about ourselves that might have helped this along this this anger this hate for the uh, Americans so much that a 9-11 could happen. But we're not hearing that. We're not hearing the reasons they might hate us other than the silly little notion that they're jealous. Not that they might not be jealous, they might be that too, but that's not the main reason. And so with this Dove story, the musical, I hope to bring peace to the Muslims and the Christians and all of the other faiths that are fighting one another over their differences that they can't really seem to sit down and just talk about. Because when you cut off communication, you can't solve a problem. So you have to have communication lines open and people feeling free to be able to discuss things that they disagree about so that compromise and agreements and understanding and understanding is what helps you have a compromise so that we can understand from looking at the situation through the eyes of the other person. And so I hope that this will, this story will help that along. And anyone who can help me that has a song or a dance or a butterfly example, please do. And I will get to the next uh, series of this story where we make a boat. We're going to make a boat out of this. This is going to become a boat. I may have to draw another one, do another one because this one has a face on it. But we'll, or the next stage is the boat stage. And it's a very wonderful stage. And this story as it was given to me was just fascinating me and I just couldn't hardly wait to get to the end of it to see how it was going to end. Let me tell you this, it ends very good.
not to fear. Fear is our worst enemy. So stay tuned. The next part of this story will begin with the next of this series. I love you all. This is the Dove Lady, over and out.